Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hey, tonight's video, we're gonna do something just a little bit different. Uh, I'm gonna try my hand at a how-to tutorial video on my 2015 Chevrolet Duramax. Uh, I've got an, an issue with my hybrid boost. I've got a leak. Uh, best I can tell, it's where the hybrid boost cylinder meets the, the, the master cylinder, I'll call it. Um, there's a seal in there that is known to leak and cause problems. So I'm starting to leave a pretty good puddle everywhere I go, uh, leaking a lot of power steering fluid. So I'm gonna try to get that fixed. Uh, and this information I feel could could help you because I'm sure a lot of you people that are watching this that may have farms, uh, may have this a vehicle of this type that would have a hybrid boost system because they're common on three quarter and one ton vehicles. Uh, it's been, the later years, I think uh, this information may kind of transfer over to different years. I'm not sure which ones are the same, but I'm pretty sure that all hybrid boosts are built pretty similar. So uh, hang out with us. Uh, hope to be informative on this video and maybe help you out if you want to tackle this project. Stay with us. So first we'll start off by removing these two 15 millimeter nuts that hold the brake master cylinder onto the booster. That way we can pull it out of the way and access this better. So this shouldn't be typical, but on mine here, the stud from the brake booster into the master cylinder is actually backed out and spinning. So. I've backed it up with a 13 millimeter wrench to hold it in place while I get the nut out. And we should be able to address that once we get the, the brake booster off. So once I got the nuts off the master cylinder, uh, mine actually has a flat star washer here that keeps the, the master cylinder on. So we just need to pry that off and then the master cylinder should come right off. There's not one on the other side, just this side right here. Here's what that flat washer looks like when it comes off. I actually have a upholstery clip remover that worked really well, but you can use a, a flat screwdriver. It just takes a little bit longer. And then once we go back together, we can take this flat washer and, and hit it with a hammer and straighten it back out. And it'll go back on uh, just like it came off. Now we can pull the master cylinder off. Just be careful not to pinch or crimp any of the, the lines. It barely clears the computer bracket here, so you have to be mindful of that. Next, we're gonna remove these lines. We got an 18 millimeter and a 16 millimeter, and this return hose that we'll need to take the clamp loose to pull this hose back. Those aren't too terribly tight. Um, I don't have a 16 millimeter um, like brake flare wrench, but it, like I said, it wasn't very tight, so they're not too bad. Now the 18. I don't know how well you can see with the camera and the light, but you can tell down in there just how how much this has leaked out. Uh, this has been going on for about a month now. 
and it's continually got worse. Um, so I'm starting to, starting to go through quite a bit of power steering fluid every day. So luckily the kit came in and we can get it changed. So it's a little bit difficult to see in here because it's pretty crowded. But here where the brake booster is, there's four 15 millimeter nuts that hold the, the hydro boost in place. So we're gonna remove those next so we can pull that out. So you can see a little bit better here. It's still hard to get it to focus in. Uh, I pulled some of the insulation back and you can see the, the two 15 millimeter nuts on the passenger side of the steering column. And over here is the two 15 millimeter nuts on the driver's side of the column. Like I said, it's really hard to get in there and, and get it focused good, but uh, once you get under the dash, you can you can see them pretty well and, and know what you're gonna have to take loose. What I kind of like to use here is a, of course, some long extensions, 15 millimeter, deep, 15 millimeter deep well with a wobble that's taped just to make it a little more rigid. Uh, it helps to keep it up in there and not let it flop so bad. But this is definitely the, the method I would choose. All right, so the next step is to take the bolt out that holds the rod onto the brake pedal. You can see right there, there's a 10 millimeter bolt that threads into the side of the brake pedal. So once you pull that bolt out, then you can release that clip right there and the rod will just slide over to the side. And then we can pull it out the front. What that clip and nut look like when you pull it off. Uh, once you get the bolt out, you basically pry back on that tab and it'll let it release up. See, it's kind of slotted there, so it releases up and it pops off. And the hardest part here is just keeping everything out of the way where you can work, work this assembly. And once you clear the firewall, it's not too terribly bad. It's still, still tight to get it out. Now we can take this over to the bench and split it apart there. So the first thing we're going to do to split this, we're going to take these five reverse torque bolts loose. And to do that, we're going to use a 3 8 wrench, 12-point uh, end, and get those broke loose. And probably it'll take some force to get those broke loose, so I'll hold it here on the bench and probably take a, a hammer and hit the wrench to break them loose. Once I got those broke loose, I'm just going to use a 3 8 12 point socket to remove them. And they are tight, guys. Very tight. I uh, end up using a two pound sledgehammer uh, on that wrench to knock them loose. Of course, once you get them broke loose, they're, uh, you know, they come out pretty. Once you get it apart, guys, this this, this pulls apart here. So just be mindful of, of how everything comes out. Um, the sequence of the springs, the push rods. Uh, anything else that might might come out when you pull that apart it's got a little bit of pressure on it on it so just be mindful of that uh, down in there is the seal that is actually the one that leaks i don't know if you can see it very well but it's 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 down in there just a, a rubber seal and that's what leaks and let the fluid get by and basically leaks right here between the two uh, pieces I'm gonna take a small crook point hook and get get down in there and, and pull that, that seal out. Kind of try to get behind it, not not scar up the walls or anything of the of the cylinder. But just try to get down in there and, and pick that out and, and bring it out the front here. So as you go back together with the two pieces, make sure that this groove right here on the end of this shaft. When you go in, it needs to line up and make sure it, the notches go down in between those two pieces right there. 
so it's all one one unit together you can kind of see those notches right here they need to ride inside of this groove once all that's back together so you'll want to kind of pull all this out to where it's out as far as it can go and then once that sets down in there it kind of locks it all together so a little bit tricky going in um, but just make sure all that's lined up and of course this spring and push rod all has to go in here together i had some camera issues as i was going back together with the hydro boost so just repeat the steps in reverse order when you're going back together and then uh, you, know, you want to pump the brakes a few times when you get it back together make sure things sealed up good no leaks and you should be good to go so mine's much much better now so if you like this video like subscribe to the channel we'll see you on the next one